Well, thank you very much. Let me say that this is the third time I come to the Academy, the first two times invited by uh, Monsieur Marcelo Sanchez Torondo, and this time by Cardinal uh, Peter Turkson. And what I intend to do here in my paper is to read from a legal perspective three main documents uh, that were uh, released by Pope Francis. Laudato Si from 2015, Fratelli Tutti from 2020, and finally the Apostolic Exhortation Laudati Deo from uh, 2023. I am the president of the Global Judicial Institute on the Environment that brings together uh, Supreme Court justices from around the world, but I'm not speaking on behalf of the Institute. So I'd like to emphasize uh, this point. My paper has three objectives, and I will cover only two of them here uh, today. The first objective, as I already alluded to, is to search for the legal foundations and repercussions in those three documents. In, in the first time I was invited here, I focused on Laudato C only. It was already very complicated. And now focusing on three and trying to um, merge the different concepts that they, um, they bring together. The second uh, goal of my paper is to analyze in those three documents how they understand resilience, and resilience from a moral perspective, from a scientific perspective, and what interests me the most from a legal perspective. And because I'm not going to discuss this point, let me say up front that resilience is a concept that is alien to law, or at least it was alien to law until very recently. In fact, we operate on the basis that we, it's not the role of law, and especially the role of judges, to enhance resilience in people or in assets, but to protect them as they are, to protect the status quo. <coughs> and as uh, the, the co-chair of this panel alluded to, also uh, to redress uh, damage that eventually has been uh, done to those assets or to those uh, people. So let's begin with the first point that I will address here today. Reading the three documents, what can we extract from those three documents from a legal perspective? And I apologize here for the scientists, I mean to the scientists, uh, to the philosophers, um, or those that have a spiritual background, because I'll be selfish. I'll be looking at the document from a legal perspective. But of course, the legal perspective is not there in isolation. It, it, it is in dialogue with those, uh, those other uh, perspectives. The first concept in those three uh, documents, and let's uh, emphasize here, Laudato Si, is an ecological message with a social and climate underpinning. Fratelli Tucci is a social document, and the economists will say also an economic document, with environmental and climate under, underpinning. And Laudate Deo is a climate document with social and ecological underpinning. It's just, in my view, I might be completely wrong, is uh, the difference among the three is on the focus, but not on the, the ethical, scientific, and legal foundation of the three documents. 
If we look, look at those three documents, the first concept that resonates directly with law is, and I quote Laudato Si, and I could quote in the other documents too, it's quoting our common home, unquote. This is in the appeal of the Pope in Laudato Si, and it comes up everywhere in those three documents. And as you know, or those have not, uh, are not familiar with law, home is a very powerful concept in law. All the way from criminal law, the home is protected, to family law, to tax law, to the law of obligations, home is very important. It's tangible and intangible. The question here, then, unfortunately, I don't have much time to explore, but it is in the paper, is what does the Pope understand by home? Is it home, like we are here, a building, or is it something else? Or is it many things other than just a construction, a material construction? And what I can extract, and I invite you to go back to the three documents, is that the, the, that Pope Francis had a concept of home as space. This is familiar to law, but not entirely familiar. We are going to see in a minute. It's home as a time concept, and this is very familiar to law, and it is home among species, and this is entirely unfamiliar or even alien to law. So let's begin as home or with home as a protected space. And this is, uh, uh, this um, uh, version of home is everywhere in the three uh, documents. I will not um, spend too much time because this is probably the easiest uh, connotation of home in the three uh, documents. But it's not entirely the easiest one, because the Pope does mention, and I am quoting from Fratelli Tutti, quoting neighbors without order, unquote. So this is home beyond the home. And this is home that goes much beyond a geographic perspective of home. And it brings in the concept of neighborhood that's traditional in law, uh, trespass in common law, or uh, droit de voisinage in French. But it is not the physical neighbor anymore that is being protected, uh, it is the ecological labor. But not the ecological labor in a single bi biome. Somebody here said and used another terminology, biozone. Uh, but it is the biosphere neighbor. You see this the huge expansion of the concept of neighborhood in those three documents. But it's also expanded from a subjective perspective, not just from an objective perspective, but from a subjective perspective. In order to include future generations, this is traditional in law, no, not controversial, uh, in other areas of law, not so much in, in, in new fields of law, but it includes so future generations and then other species as well. So you see, we move from the traditional concept of home to expand into the whole biosphere, future generations, other species, 
at the end of the day, those three documents are protecting the community of life. All living organisms, but also the foundations of life as we find in the German uh, constitution. Let me move now um, to the second key concept, in my view, in those three documents. And it's related to this one, which is the, and I quote, the principle of common good, unquote. This is almost lunch and dinner in ethics, but not so much in law. And the, the way we should read those, that concept in those three documents is that the Pope is, is speaking of the traditional concept of common good, meaning not individual uh, good, common, but good, going beyond asset. And this changes the property uh, right equation in the three documents, and I will speak about that in, in a minute. So I think the Pope is also talking about the common bad. So it's not just the common good. We are familiar with the common good, things that are have value uh, to more than one person, to uh, a community, or to the whole world. But also, we should be aware that there is a common bad things, actions, or omissions that in the past were individually even criminalized because they would cause damage to one individual or to a few individuals, now they are the common bad because they can affect the whole planet and the community of life as such. The other, oh, my time is, um, but I still have four minutes. So the other very important uh, point from those three documents with legal repercussions is, I quote, it's from Laudato Si, the conviction that everything in the world is connected, unquote. It's the holistic approach. But in law, we feel more comfortable in splitting things splitting people, splitting space. And that's why me and my colleague, Andres Gallardo, enjoy what we call jurisdiction. So on one side of the river is one judge. On the other side of the river, it's an entirely different judge. It can be one state judge on one side and the federal judge on the other side. One that knows about environmental law, the other one that hates environmental law. It's more interesting tech law. That's legitimate. So we split space, we split people in order to facilitate the delivery of justice, but we might end up delivering injustice instead of justice, and especially injustice for the environment. Let me move into the conclusion, and unfortunately, I cannot say much as I planned about us judging. And I would, I, uh, I entirely echo the criticism that Andres has made of us. We judges don't think that we should be criticized. Um, <laughs> we, are, we are above that. Um, that's not true. There are judges in more and more that invite our criticism because we want um, to play by the same rule um, that we require to other people. So let me finish perhaps with just listing um, uh, two more or three more concepts that to me are central uh, to, oh, your timer is different from my Apple phone. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought I still had two more minutes. Um, okay, so it, uh, if, I, if I can have two more minutes. So three more concepts, I'm not going to expand on them, uh, but because they were mentioned by the two co-chairs, I would like to emphasize that. In Fratelli Tucci, more than in Laudato Si and in Laudate Deo, the concept of so the social role of property. And this is, has played a major role, especially in civil law countries. It's almost communism in the United States. 
and, and, and other countries, but it's in the constitutions of most Latin American countries, and I'll say in Africa, in Asia, and in Europe, uh, in continental Europe. But what the Pope really meant, I think, is not just the social function of property right, is the ecological function of property, which is an, an entirely different dimension. And this has been recognized by case law in Latin America and in Asia more recently. Let me finish with two uh, direct views that uh, those three documents make of law. So you would not expect uh, a document, uh, documents like those to use law, but to teach about law. But here, uh, it is said it, in, in Laudato Si, and it was said here today, that he, I quote, human rights are not equal for all, unquote. So the terminology of human rights and the concept of human rights and the problems of human rights are incorporated into those three documents, and especially in Fratelli Tutti. And to me, the most beautiful direct use of legal language and constitutional language is when the Pope uh, in, uh, in Fratelli Tutti states, I quote, every human being has the right to live with dignity. This is almost common sense it's in all constitutions, almost all constitutions of the world. But then the Pope goes beyond and invites us, I suppose, to, to constitutional reform. And it, he says, and develop integrity. Because having the right to live with dignity, is, what is that? If you add the last part and develop integrally, everything becomes much more comprehensive, holistic, and I would say civilized. Thank you.